just like with the cinema 4D's primitives, uh, for example, cubes, spheres, and whatnot, there's a hidden UV map. You can't see it when the object is in its primitive state. If I press C, you will see that the UV map is exposed. Now, there's good reason for that, and that is because when the object is primitive, and because you can vary the number of polygons, let me turn on my display, and UVs are dependent on the number of polygons of an object, it has to be generated automatically. And that's why if it was in a manual mode, it will create some sort of confusion. Now in the same way, the output generators have various hidden components. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to get rid of the cube and I'm going to load a very specific asset, a simple Voronoi fracture. I'm very proud I made this. And uh, it has, let me select it, one input. I'm going to create a sphere and select my asset and drop the sphere in here. Now let me make my sphere invisible. You can see that we have one output generator and there's nothing over here, no tags whatsoever. But you can see that it's fractured. So if I zoom in, you will see it's nicely fractured. Let me show you something. If I drag this and make a copy, and then make it editable. I'm going to press C on my keyboard. When it becomes a mesh object, a simple polygon object, all the data that was hidden previously has been exposed. What we have here is a font tag, we have a normal tag, we have three vertex weight maps, and you can see whenever I select one, the colors change, the actual grayscale values change. And then we have two selections. We have the outer and the inner. And uh, both of them are active groups. And then we have a UV tag. So whenever we have an output that is supposed to have some sort of data coming from Houdini, and again, that's based on the asset design, that information is hidden and can be exposed when made editable. Now you'll ask me, yes, but now that I've made it editable, then uh, this little polygon object here does not um, answer to the asset generator. Yes, but we can do something else. What I'm going to do is drag these on the output generator. Nothing else. And I'm going to delete this. I don't need it anymore. Now you can't see anything happening now, but let me show you a couple of tricks you can do here. Number one, I'm going to create a material and in the material, in the color channel, I'll turn off the reflectance. I'm going to use a effects vertex map. Click on the vertex map and in the vertex map, I'm going to drop this one here. Now, if I apply this material and render, you will see that the colors get propagated. Now, how can we use this to actually transfer color from Houdini? Because we all know that color is three numbers, one for red, one for green, and one for blue. And currently, a vertex map can only hold one number, not three. Three numbers is called a vector three. We can combine these three vertex maps into an RGB color. How do we do that? Well, one method is the following. I'm going to create a layer shader. Click on the layer shader, and I have my vertex map. And I'm going to name this red. I'll make a copy just by dragging the icon underneath. I'm going to name it green and then do the same and call it blue. I'm going to select each one and drop the proper vertex map. One thing you need to see is that there's a very specific naming here which says point color G for green. This is a standard name we use to transfer color information from Houdini. When this asset was created, it applied a color variable, the so-called CD variable, which is the color in Houdini. And Cinema 4D, in order to understand that information, converts this into three separate colors. So point color G for green, click on this, and drop the blue. This is step one. Step two, we need three colors. Color, red, and I'm going to make it red. Go up, drag this from the icon to make a copy. Call this green. 
I'm going to drag it and then I'm going to change it. Double click, call it blue. Click on this, make it 100% green. Click on this, make it 100% blue. Two more things. We need a substrate. A color, which is black underneath. And then we need to do the following. I want this to mask the red. I want this to mask the green. And I want this to mask the blue. And finally, I want the transfer to be screen, screen, and screen. Now, having the material been applied previously, if I render, I have a colorized Voronoi map. Let's see what happens if I change some parameters. Select it. Let's go down here. Let's find a count. Change this number so we have more fragments. Let's render. And you will see that with this setup, although it's still linked to the asset generator, the colors are created properly. Let me show you one more thing that is quite interesting. So we have this output. What I'm going to do is create a fracture object. Now what I'm going to do is not going to work. I'm going to make the fracture object a parent of the output generator. And I'm going to say I want you to explode segments. And then with a fracture selected, I'm going to add a random effector. And you can see that everything moves together. And uh, the reason is, basically, that I need to do two things. Number one, this specific asset has a little setting here where it says create output groups. I'm going to turn this off. And again, nothing happens if I render, of course. We still have the colors. And I need to add one more thing. As usual, when nothing else works, always put it under a connect object. So get the connect object, turn off the weld, make this a child, and there you go. And if I render, you will see that everything stays in place, the colors and everything else. And if I make the random effector work in turbulence mode and press play, you will see that we have a dynamic animation here and we have color and everything else. And this is one of the ways you will use it. So make it editable, copy the vertex maps or the other data. We will talk about the other attributes uh, for particles and meshes as we go on and we will discuss it in detail on the forums. For particle outputs the process is ever so slightly different. So let me load a simple particle generator. Good and we have these particles that are generated. Lovely. Now if we try the same approach uh, get the particle and copy it and make it editable and nothing really happens because uh, particle generators do not work in the same way that meshes work. But how do we deal with uh, the data that comes through? Now first of all when we talk about particle outputs there's only a specific number of attributes that uh, come across from Houdini and that is the position, the color, the velocity, the mass, the age, the life, as in life expectancy, and the ID. Now, mind you, the ID is a very important part of the particle asset. Because Houdini has a different way of dealing with particles, essentially Houdini doesn't differentiate between points and particles. And particles, as far as Houdini is concerned, is just points with attributes. We need to make a distinction in Cinema 4D to translate points with attributes into thinking particles. And that happens only if the points that come from Houdini have an ID attribute. And that is spelled ID in small letters, not capital. ID. Now let me show you how you would go and uh, extract that data. I'm going to create a null, create an expresso, and go here and add a P get data. So as you can see here, we have all the different attributes that a thinking particle can have. How do we set this to read these particles? All we have to do is do a p pass 
link it and in the p pass I want to drop only the group that is associated with this output so I'm going to do it in the following way go to the thinking particle settings and you will see here that if I twirl open that little arrow I have a particle group which has the same name as this and I have to drop this group in here and now this specific group is going to go through to the pgetData node and we can extract all the information by using the position, the color, the velocity, the mass, the age, the life, and the ID which is not recorded here but it's a general attribute for each thinking particle. And this way you can do whatever you want with the data that comes with the particle.